Hi, this is Jan Guarino, and you're in Fearless Watercolors. I'm here to just do a demo of basic watercolor brush strokes, just to give you some basis. Um, very often we struggle with watercolors, and because we struggle with them, we um, tend to go back to pushing paint around, and watercolors are really meant to move uh, in water. And what I see so often is people working very dry without enough water. So this is just one of those basic things that help you to be fearless. So I'm gonna demo every step with you. I'm gonna switch cameras right now. And I have some um, scrap pieces of paper. This is what I'm gonna be demoing today. I'll be going through all of that with you. And I just have some scrap pieces of paper and um, a pencil. And what I'm going to do is, oh, you know, let me just say this first off, I'm right-handed. So my paint, my water, oh, my brushes, everything is on my right side. So that's just like one, I see people reaching over and it's just very, um, you know, crazy how people paint sometimes. So I recommend if you're left-handed, put everything on your left side. It's just one of those basic things that when I teach in person, I see that, um, uh, you know, mistake that water is all over and then you're splattering and you're, you're reaching over to get your paints and your brushes. Um, you can't really see this, but my brushes are all right here in this really nice um, upright uh, folder. So this actually uh, opens up and folds over and is now a carrying case. So the way that it works is it just folds over. I have all of this stuff on my website, um, all my supply list and all my colors and all the things that I use. So all my supplies are on my right side. In addition, I just have a simple ruler here that I'm going to just uh, section off one, two, three, four basic areas. Okay, let me zoom into that a little bit. And that's too much. Hold on. There we go. And so this will be my, what I'm going to call my flat wash, my gradation. Wet into wet. Wet and my dry brush. And with the knowledge of those four brush marks, you really can pretty much do anything, okay? So the first one is what we call flat wash. So I'm just gonna take any color that I kind of have here. Oh, by the way, I always have drying mats so that I can put my brush in water and I can easily lift off extra water onto my drying mat. So that's just something that I always do. Um, okay, let's just take a color, any color. I'm going to take a, uh, I'll take cobalt. I don't know why, I'm just picking cobalt. And I'm going to create a flat wash just by filling that box with color. You can go in and add a little bit more color because you can see it got a little lighter as it got to the bottom. And you could drop in a little bit more color into that area. I will tell you that I rarely use this only because I'm usually doing something else like feathering out or working wet into wet. But this is dry. There's no water on this piece of paper at all. There's no water. I will tell you when I'm adding water. Just going a little closer for you there. The second one I use a lot, a lot. This is called my gradation. So I'm going to take a color. I'll take a different color. I'm going to take one of my favorites, which is Cascade Green. And I'm just going to put it along the top. This is going to show you the value meaning the deepness darkness of that it has um, the dark that's the darkest expression of that color now i'm going to end it about there i'm going to take my brush i'm going to swish it in my water 
take all of my color off, roll my brush on my mat so it's just a little damp. And now I'm going to invite this to come down with a little bit of water. And so I'm just taking that and I'm, it dried a little fast because it's pretty hot today. Okay, there it goes. It's a little warm as we know today. So I'm just adding a little bit of color and a little bit more water and there it goes. You see how it's just traveling down? That is one of the just most magical things in watercolor is that this happens and it's meant to happen. So by dropping a little extra water on the top here, you could see how it's just gradating down. This is important to know because what I find is that most students, when they're doing their swatches, this is my swatch sheet. This is my, this is a representation of my palette, my 33 well palette. So every color is coordinated and I know exactly what's going to happen with every color. But if you just do your swatches as a flat wash, you will never know what your paints are capable of doing. Meaning, let me go closer. Look at what Cascade Green did. It is granulating, which is another thing watercolors do for us, if we let them, into turquoise. How fabulous is that? So. I now see what this color looks like as I 100% uh, the color and then into percentages of everything down to the white of the paper. This is what I feel one of the most important moves in watercolor is to know how to do this. And every single one of these, you'll get very good as you go along and do these. You need to know that indigo can be this dark or this light, that your ultramarine will be this dark or this light, your violets will be this dark or just gradate into white and everything in between. And so by having this and then marking not just the color, but the manufacturer, because it, it's different for every manufacturer, they're not all the same. The Mamaris, that's my Verzino violet, um, some granulate, some move beautifully, some just kind of hang out. Here's, here's my um, uh, a Daniel Smith uh, Imperial Purple, which breaks into pinks. My cobalt violet goes from blue, bluish violet into lighter violet. You simply won't know what your paints can do unless you let this happen. Um, so this is probably my number one thing that I like to do. This is probably number two <laughs> of my favorite things to do. I rarely just do a flat wash. I have water on my brush and I'm just wetting an area with some water. Okay, just nothing on my brush, just water. Now I'm going to take a color that I know moves very well in water, which is Mamari, and I'm going to drop it in and let it explode. So working wet into wet gives us the chance. It's kind of like gradation. However, I want to fill this block up with color. Maybe I want to add two colors. I'm going to add another Mamari color, my Verzino Violet, and I'm just going to drop it in there. Watch it explode. That is working wet into wet. To me, there's nothing better than watching my paint explode and do incredible things for me. I can keep doing this all day long. That's just a little bit more indigo. I'll add a little bit more Verzino Violet. I'm, I'm rinsing my brush out as I'm doing each one of these so that they don't contaminate too much in my, my palette. So this is wet into wet, and I do this a lot a lot, a lot. So we have three basic washes. Now, the fourth one is something that we use our tooth of our paper to 
uh, give us what is a dry mark, a, a thirsty mark. A thirsty mark is something that I'm gonna take much less water, okay? And I'm gonna go, I'll go, I'll go back to the indigo. And now my brush has much less water on it, more paint, and now I'm giving it a thirsty brush mark. See that? I'm just, it's skipping along the texture of the paper. And this is just a beautiful way to do certain textures like wood and oh, just so many opportunities to do something like that. So um, those in essence are my four basic marks. Now, I just wanna take one color that is so beautiful. Um, it is called Shadow Violet. It's, it's, it is called a fugitive, which means it will um, not hold color fast for like a hundred years. Well, I look at it this way. I'm probably not gonna be around in that many years. So I'm not gonna worry about it. Goes on like a gray, okay? It just looks like an ick, like Jan, why would you even use that color? I take the color off my brush and with water, I'm inviting it to move into, this is gonna be another gradation. One of my favorite things to do is just charge up an area that is now, this is another form of wet into wet for sure, but it also is a gradation. Shadow violet does break up into other colors and you just have to be patient and let it break into pinks and purples. And they do sort of start appearing in a little bit of time. Uh, you just have to know that it's gonna happen sort of like the way the cascade just kind of appeared. Um, one of my other ones that I love to use is moon glow. Now I'm just gonna leave this be, okay, for now. Just gonna let it be. I'm gonna take a little bit of my moon glow. These are Daniel Smith colors. And I'm gonna do it again. Only this time I'm gonna wet the whole, like a, as, as if I'm doing the wet into wet, okay? So I wet the whole thing. Yeah, I had a little bit of color on that. Let me just lift that off. Lift that off, lift that off. Okay, I'm gonna go into my moon glow. I'm gonna drop it in. It's a little more violet. Tilt my paper. Now here's the trick, guys. Water and gravity will help you to move your paints. So I don't necessarily work on an angle because I don't want everything to necessarily drip to the bottom. But I do, just going to lift this off a little bit. Um, this is really, uh, old, must be old paper because it's just a little, not really working all that vibrantly as I would like it to be. But, you know, I, I don't have a lot of old papers. So I'm just using this um, for this demo purposes. This is really what you want to be practicing. And so by allowing it to move itself. So we did a gradation where we added water to the bottom. And now we did a gradation where we just keep charging up the top. Here's what I'm not doing. I'm not taking my brush and pushing it down. That is not what a gradation is because now your brush made that mark. This right here is a natural gradation. So if you're pushing your paint around, one of two things I would recommend, and that is add color, water, and gravity to your painting. And with that, this is basically some very, very, like these are the things that you basically use as a brush mark in anything you do. Uh, the most popular ones that I use are gradations and wet into wets. I will add dry brush marks occasionally. I rarely use flat, but flat is what I see a lot of students do because they don't understand the rest of these as much as they should. And there is only one thing and one thing only that will help you to not do this. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying 
watercolors has so many better properties than this. All of these to me are much more interesting than that flat wash, right? Um, and like, you know, just going in and trying two colors into a wet into wet or just one color and letting it move. Those are much more interesting um, opportunities for embracing watercolors as only watercolors could do. Because here's what I say, and I'm going to come on and say this to you face to face. This is the reason to paint in watercolor. It's the only medium that does this. Acrylics do not do this. Oils don't do this. Everything has to be done with the brush. Watercolors are meant to move in water, especially, and I didn't say this right up front, it is on my um, lit, uh, supply list. You must use professional paper and you must use professional paints. Do not waste your time and your money with inferior supplies. Brushes, I will say this, that they are by far um, uh, so good, the synthetics. I don't even buy any more sables. They just not don't hold up. But the synthetics are really, really good. So, and you don't have to spend as much money as we used to to gain, um, you know, uh, control and do everything. The watercolors, however, require professional paint and the good paper. So, um, Arches number one, 140 cold press is you could get a block easy breezy and practice. Don't practice on your inferior paper or with your student grade paints like Cotman or Academy grade. It's not going to do this. You're going to push the paint around with your brush and you're going to be frustrated because I'm telling you here, you're going to think it's you. And it's not you. It's the paint and the paper that require these techniques, require the good stuff. Um, so that's my little demo this morning. I'm so glad you joined me. And um, yeah, thanks for coming on. Um, so it's just a quick little demo. Of course, there's so much more to learn. But um, if you're using your good paper and your good paint, the fear, I think, comes into the um, idea that you're afraid to let it flow and you're afraid of what's going to happen. And you it's an unknown, right? Watercolors is kind of a great unknown. That's also the beauty of watercolor and the enjoyment of watercolor. And, you know, it's the only medium that will keep going until it's dry. And even then we could go back in, you know, but um, there's such beauty to be gained by um, embracing watercolor and their techniques and the things that it does for us. And as soon as you start to see that there's beautiful watercolor blossoms that kind of happen um, all the time, you know, that that's just um, the most, um, you know, amazing opportunity to have your, your eye see these things happen. Um, I, there's so every, every single thing has an example of what I'm talking about, um, here. Okay. Look at all of the wonderful things that happened in this, you know, area of just dropping color in and letting it blossom, letting things happen. These basics will help you to embrace this as opposed to being afraid of it. That's really what it's all about. So um, it's just important to practice. So that's today's little demo. I hope you enjoyed it. It was really just to give you some basics um, to understand watercolors, to understand what can happen when you um, let them do the work. However, understanding it's water, water, gravity, good paper, good paint. It was great having you on. I hope you enjoy this. Um, and I hope that you refer to it um, as often as you feel you need to. It's there for you. And I'll see you again soon. Bye now.